Thanks for stopping by. When it comes to home automation, there can be many hazards. Please be careful when making modifications to appliances and interfacing into high voltage circuits. If you do not know what you're doing, you could end up electrocuting yourself, damaging your appliance, or starting a fire. Now that we have talked about the risks, let's watch the video. Hi YouTube, this is a little demo of my do-it-yourself energy monitor. It is a very simple setup consisting of two CT clamps, which stands for current transformer, an Arduino, and a PoE splitter. I cannot stress this enough, if you do not know what you are doing, don't try this. This is a proof of concept video only. You could easily hurt yourself if you attempt to do this and you do not know what you're doing. So here you can see the two CT clamps. They're both clamped onto the main feeds coming from the pole. I've used a CAT6 cable to connect the two CT clamps to the Arduino, which is, lives right above the panel in this a little electrical box. You can see the PoE splitter uh, sitting right in front of the Arduino, which of course provides the Arduino with power from the PoE switch. And you can see the connections on top. It's a very, very simple setup. It literally takes three wires, one ground and then two signal um, from each uh, CT, which feed the analog pins. And this is what it looks like when it's all buttoned up. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how this is hooked up. So here's this little draw, a diagram I drew up, and I know it's pretty awful, but it should get the idea across. So we've got our feed coming in from our PoE switch. Um, that goes into the PoE splitter, which then basically splits off to 12 volts and Ethernet, which plug directly into the Arduino. And then we've got our two CT clamps. And as you can see, the wiring is very simple. Um, each one is listed uh, labeled ground and 5 volt. And you can see we just join the two grounds together and ground to the one of the ground pins on the Arduino. And then we hook up the 5 volt line to each of the analog pins on the Arduino. Well, analog 1 or 0 and 1 in my case. All right, so let's actually now talk a little bit about the math of how this all works. Um, so on the Arduino sketch, we are going to read analog 0 and 1 continuously, and that will give us a value of 0 to 1024. Now, we need to convert that to actual amperage. So we go down to the equation here. Um, in my case, we will do a, well, actually, in my case, I'm using 10.23 because I tuned it a little bit. But technically, 10.24 should give you um, one, uh, a value of 100 if, the re if it returns 1024. So here's an example. Um, analog 1, or analog 0, reads 624. We go 624 divided by 10.23, and that'll give us 60.99, which is our value in amperage. So if you wanted to fine tune this a little bit, you could use a clamp meter and basically clamp onto the same wire that your CT is clamped onto, and then just compare the values, and you can adjust this a little bit to, to tune it um, closer to whatever the, the clamp meter is showing, which theoretically should be a little bit more accurate than our little Arduino contraption here. So that's all fine and dandy. So then that uh, gives us a, an amperage reading into Home Assistant. And then in Home Assistant, now we decide we want wattage. So my Arduino sketch will provide two values, L1 and L2, um, each one corresponding to one of the uh, clamps. Um, so to convert that to watts, we're going to take L1 and L2, add them together, which will provide a total amount in amps. And then what we're going to do to get watts is multiply the total uh, of L1 and L2 by 120, which is our standard voltage here. So as an example, um, we've got L1 at 26 amps, L2 at 8 amps. So we're going to add those together. We've got 34 amps as a total. Then we're going to go 34 times 120, which will provide 4,080, 4, which is your value in watts. Now, this, is, uh, this isn't this is 100% accurate because this 120 volts, it fluctuates a little bit. Sometimes I've seen my voltage as low as 110 and sometimes as high as 122, 123. Um, in my case, I've used a static value because it's accurate enough. But if you have some something in Home Assistant that is able to provide your current voltage, um, theoretically you could dynamically update this equation to use whatever the current voltage is, and then your your 
your accuracy is going to be a little bit more precise when calculating watts. All right, let's look at the Lovelace UI. So here we have uh, some, some data that I, I collect from those sensors in the panel. So energy sensor L1 and L2 is basically just the raw data coming in from the Arduino uh, through MQTT. These two sensors down here, total power usage amps, total power usage watts, uh, basically takes these two values, adds them together um, in the case of amps, and then in the case of watts, it'll do a conversion to from amps to watts. Um, this value here, the total usage in watts, is used to calculate my daily and monthly energy usage. And these use the uh, energy, no, the utility monitor integration with Home Assistant. So I took it one step further. These two items, I wanted a more usable graph for my, my energy usage. So I went into Grafana and I created um, a, a daily usage chart. So you can see each date shows up on, on the uh, a little pop-up there when I hover over the different bars and it also will show you the low temperature for that day which is based off one of my outside temperature sensors so just as an example we do have some electric heat so when it got really cold out down to about negative 12 degrees Celsius um, our power usage was quite high I find this quite interesting because I can also adjust what time period I'm looking at I can look at multiple months, I can look at a year. I don't have that much data yet, but when I do, it will be quite handy for tracking my usage. And I've also got a very basic chart that monitors both those two sensors through MQTT directly from the Arduino. So this is a very simple project uh, to build if you were to try it yourself. Um, but I've again, this is just proof of concept video, not instructional. Uh, I used an Arduino, two CT clamps, and an Ethernet shield. Well, actually, in my case, I used a special Key Studio Arduino from Amazon that had built-in Ethernet. Um, all links to everything you need to know is in the, the video description. Uh, total cost, about 35 to 40 bucks. So nice and easy. Doesn't require any special resistors or anything in line with, which is common with some of the other CTs I've seen on, on AliExpress. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to do. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, um, please like and subscribe. And uh, until next time, uh, we will see you later.